Sum 41's new and final double album, Heaven and Hell, is a mixed bag of familiar sounding tunes with one side completely dominating the other in terms of sonics and quality. But it's also a fitting end for the band. Let's talk about the new album from Sum 41, Heaven and Hell, on this edition of Rock Album Review. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Nick here with you. Welcome back to the channel. Heaven and Hell is Sum 41's eighth and final studio album. At least that's what they tell us. It's the follow-up to 2019's Order and Decline. You know what? And I really enjoy Sum 41. I think they're a great band, but I don't really listen to them as much as other bands in the genre like Blink-182 or Green Day. But I do love their stuff, especially the stuff from those first few records, songs like Fat Lip and In Too Deep. I love those songs. They had a crazy run of some great songs back in the day. And I do remember when Sum 41 one first hit the scene uh, back in the late 90s and the early 2000s. They were Canada's equivalent of, of Green Day or Blink-182, and they're from the general same geographic region as me in the world here in Southern Ontario. But they're from Ajax, which isn't as cool as where I'm from in Hamilton, so sorry guys. And I did see them perform one of their early sets at the Somersault Festival uh, in Barrie, Ontario, which was Our Lady Pieces Festival uh, back in the day. They did an early set, uh, I think early on in the day when I saw them at Somersault Salt, and they've always been the perfect mix of punk rock attitude and metal riffs. So I was very excited to listen to this new album from Sum 41, Heaven and Hell, but you know what? I do have one initial complaint. We all know that this is Sum 41's last record and they're breaking up, but did you ever notice that bands just don't know how to break up like they used to, you know, bands when they broke up, they used to go out in a blaze of glory. Uh, you know, they would never talk to each other again and move on with their lives. But that is definitely not happening with Sum 41. You change, man. It used to be about the music. I said slag off! And nowadays, bands don't break up. They'd have to do a final album. They have to do a final tour. They have to maximize full profitability as they're on their way out the door. And they have to give their fans a chance to grieve with them. Bands don't break up anymore because they hate each other like they should. They do it because it's a sound business decision. Give it five years before the inevitable reunion tour. Mark my words. Anyway, to end off their career, Sum 41 has blessed us with a double album that fully explores both sides of their sound. Heaven is the pop punk side and Hell is their more metal side, which has always been part of the, the general Sum 41 mix of their sound. So they're going out with a bang with 20 tracks of uh, Sum 41 goodness. And for me, Heaven and Hell is overall a mixed bag of some really, some really good tunes, some tunes not so much, many of which remind me of other Sum 41 songs and probably a million other songs as well. I was spending a lot of time when I was listening to Heaven and Hell wondering what song does this song remind me of? and I was doing that throughout the duration of listening to this record. And this album is relatively short for a double album. It clocks in at just under an hour at 55 minutes, which is okay with me because a lot of Sum 41 it goes a long way. Don't get me wrong. I love Sum 41. I love me a good double album, but I found myself uh, getting kind of bored with listening to this record and thinking this might be a little too much Sum 41. I don't really consider Sum 41 to be a double album band, you know? Smashing Pumpkins, for sure. Uh, the Beatles, of course, even with Green Day and their album trilogy, Uno, Dos, and Trey, those bands seem to be able to pull off that large amount of material, and I'm not sure that Sum 41 can do that as well. But on Heaven and Hell, there's too much filler for me to really enjoy everything. There's not enough going on between those key singles, those key tracks, to keep my interest for this long. First off, let me get to the heaven side of things, the pop punk side. To me, this entire side is very much by the numbers, Sum 41, the opening track, Waiting on a Twist of Fate, uh, reminded me of Billy Idol's Dancing With Myself, mixed with Blink-182's Anthem Part 3, which was from their most recent album, One More Time. You have that similar pummel of crunchy rock guitars, you have those big drums, definitely a great way to kick off this record, and it just sets the tone and sets the vibe for listening to this Sum 41 record. I really think Landmines is a great song Sum 41 single holds up against their past hits very well. Uh, Derek Wibley in general sounds really great on this record. He still has really great vocals, even though he's gone through a lot in his personal life and with some health issues over the last number of years. He sounds fantastic. Uh, the melody is fairly standard on Landmines, but I think it's really enjoyable. I also dug the track I Can't Wait, which definitely reminded me of the late 90s, early 2000s pop punk era right from the first riff. It's the kind of song that you would have heard an all killer no filler and I think uh, it's a really great addition on this record as well but it wasn't long before the heaven side of heaven and hell really started to sound uh, samey for me uh, time won't wait 
pretty much had the same melody as Landmines. The chorus could be interchanged with that song and a million other songs, uh, both Sum 41 and other songs in the genre. Just, it sounded too generic for me. And I know the album's drawn along those kind of pop punk versus metal uh, genre lines, but there are songs on this record that that bleed between the genres. And at the end of the day, it is a Sum 41 record, uh, and there's a little bit of a mix with things going on there. A song like Future Primitive, I really enjoyed that. That could have been on either side of this record, and that was a really great song. Also, some great solos happening on here. It's a great guitar record. Sum 41 have always delivered in terms of great riffs, great tones, and then Dave Brown sound on here delivering some really great solos, really ripping. I've always been glad that he's been back in the band. I know he left for a little while, but I'm, I'm glad he's back on here and he's doing his thing. He sounds great. And also shout out to Tom Thacker. If you're a Canadian rock fan, then you know him as the lead singer of uh, fellow punk rockers, Gob, who are a classic Canadian punk rock band from the 90s, even preceding Sum 41. Uh, they're going to be opening up for Sum 41 when they play their final shows later this year at the Scotiabank Arena uh, in Toronto. So I'm really glad to see and hear him on this record. So shout out to Tom Thacker. My favorite song on the heaven side of things uh, definitely is Dopamine. Really loved the melody on here. Reminded me of Blink-182 uh, and the song Fell in Love, as well as a million other songs. That was the problem with listening to a lot of the songs on heaven, but I still think it's one of the better songs on this first side. And then things started to fade for me on the heaven side of things. Uh, a lot of the songs on the second half of the first half uh, started to blend into each other. I liked Johnny Libertine. It had a nice little punk rock attitude to it. I liked Radio Silence. I thought that was enjoyable as well, but really that was it for me on heaven. Hell, however, I enjoyed a lot more than heaven. Who would have thought I'm more uh, on Satan's side than on God's side when it comes to Sum 41. I think the heavier side of Sum 41 is definitely what resonated with me and something that I enjoyed a lot more when you have heaven versus hell. Preparasi a satire was uh, kind of an electronic auto-tuned uh, intro with, uh, with vocals from Derek Wibley with some pianos kicking things off. Already a more ambitious start on this side of the record than what we heard on the pop punk side of things. Really liked Rise Up, one of the better singles. I like when the band goes heavier. Had a great solo on there. I really liked Stranger in These Times, which was one of the harder hitting record uh, songs on the record. Really great riff on there. And there really is no shortage of great guitar moments happening on both of these records. And as a guitar player, as a guitar fan of like, you know, guitar records where they really turn things up to 11, um, there's something that I really enjoyed on this record. I really enjoyed the riffs and I really enjoyed the great guitar tones that were happening on both sides of the record. And then there are some production flourishes on Hell that made it stand out for me a little bit more than the usual Sum 41 fare. Over the Edge had some really cool uh, piano on the outro of that track. And then I Don't Need Anyone had some really killer bass tones on it as well. So kudos to the producer. This album sounds really great. The only downside with Hell is the same as the downside on Heaven. The songs didn't really stick with me after the first couple of tracks on that first listen the second half of the second half uh, starts to wane as well with the songs just kind of meshing together as being the same old same old I, I dig it but it just didn't really hold my attention and after writing all of these tracks for this epic 20 song double album original songs Sum 41 for some reason sticks a random cover of the Rolling Stones Paint It Black on this record I don't really know why uh, as great and classic as Paint It Black is it's kind of played out there are a million other songs you could cover but why not just write one more original song uh, that's okay the rest of the hell side of things faded for me as well if you ask me to sing the melody of like songs like house of liars or it's all me or the final song how the end begins i definitely wouldn't be able to do it overall heaven and hell will definitely please hardcore sum 41 fans who want to get as much new sum 41 uh, in them before the band calls it a day very slowly and gradually uh, calls it a day. But as a as a casual Sum 41 fan, for someone who, who likes the band, but maybe not as much as other bands in the genre, it was a little bit too much Sum 41 for me. Don't get me wrong, the band sounds great. Great performances are all solid. Derek Whipley is absolutely crushing it with those vocals. But I was a little tired after listening to so much Sum 41. Uh, definitely not a double album band for me, but there were some uh, some enjoyable moments on Heaven and Hell, uh, despite it being too much Sum 41. So I'm going to give the new album from Sum 41, Heaven and Hell, a solid 4 out of 5. <laughs> 